9, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Acts chapter 9. Bob Parker. Acts, the ninth chapter. Whew. You don't realize your age until your grandkids show up. That's what I heard. Little Johnny asked his grandma how old she was. Grandma answered, 39 and holding. Johnny thought for a moment and then said, and how old would you be if you let go? <laughs> Are you comfortable? <laughs> Amen. Acts 9.31. Do you remember the tumultuous start in the book of Acts? We have the, the rushing wind, the uh, power of the Holy Spirit given to people. Chapter 1, then these ma amazing 3,000 people getting saved, 5,000 people, and, it's, and all of it is just so real, so organic that's taking place. They're meeting in homes. Uh, the, the Romans are upset over it. The, the Jewish religion is upset over it. And this, this thing called Christianity is just exploding. It's the birth of something new, a new church. Amazing thing taking place. And, and uh, revivals and, and Paul in Acts chapter 9 gets knocked off his high horse and, and goes through a little blinding and then he goes through a little finding. And then we find Peter at the end of chapter 9, beginning, uh, excuse me, yeah, at the end of chapter 9. It says, then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. It was strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It grew in numbers, living in the fear of the Lord. Verse 32. As Peter traveled about the country, he went to visit the saints in Lydda. There he found a man named Ananias, a paralytic who had been bedridden for eight years. Of course, eight is the number for new beginnings. How many know it's a new beginning? Somebody sent me a text last night, again, dealing with that football game. They said, Pastor... Alabama has beat LSU for eight straight years. It's time for a new beginning. <laughs> I said, all right, y'all take my... They turn my preaching on me. That's what gets me. Just turn my preaching on me. Just turn it back on me. Amen. And uh, the scripture says eight years. And Ananias, Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up. Take care of your mat. Immediately, Ananias got up. All those who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. I think the King James Version says, take up your bed and walk. Ananias' name means, look this up, praise. Praiseworthy. When your praise has been crippled, locked down, it brings frustration in your life. Many times life happens to you and it shuts your mouth. Your mouth just gets quiet. You don't say anything. There's no more praise on you. Frustration is the doorway breakthrough walks through. Did a man say that on Tuesday night? Frustration is the doorway breakthrough walks through. The more frustrated you are in life, get ready for a breakthrough to come through. Because when you're complacent and laid back and they say, oh, everything is good, then nothing happens. But when you get sick, when your kids are in trouble, when life starts breaking down, you get frustrated, and the next thing you know, get ready for a breakthrough. Something's got to happen, and then you get your praise on. Everybody say, get your praise on. In other words, it's time to get up. Let me just say, I am humbled, extremely humbled that these men would come all the way from California to help us. It, it just, it, everything about me, and when, when, as soon as I realized they were coming, you know what happened to me? I got my praise on. I thought, oh, I can't wait. To, oh, we, we're going to keep working. We're going to keep staying at it. We're going to keep pressing in. But when they get here, I remember during Harvey, it was like a shot in my arm. It was like, whoo, a vitamin B. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. Vitamin B shot, man. I was just fired up, and I'm still that way now. The Message Bible says it this way. Peter went off on a mission to visit all the churches in the course of his travels. He arrived in Lydda and met with the believers there. He came across a man, his name was Ananias, who had been in bed eight years paralyzed. Peter said, Ananias, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up, make up your bed. And he did it. Jump right up out of bed. When's the last time you've done that? <laughs> uh, my grandkids will. Kids will. But uh, for us, it's like, Oh, you remind you that you're still in an earth suit, don't it? 
when it's aged a little bit. Everybody who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him walking around and woke up to the fact that God was alive and active among them. Father, what we need in this time is for people to know that you are alive and active among us. That you do not just sit far away on some throne letting things take care of itself, but that you intervene in the life of men and women. I ask that you come in right now in the hurts and the heartaches and, and the goodness and all the things that take place in the human life and that you would be active and full of action in us in Jesus' name. And everyone shout. Amen. Amen. Come on, give me another shout. Amen. Before you sit down, high five two people, all right? Just say, come on. Come on. Come on. All right. I just said two people. If they owe you money, leave them alone. When you haven't made your bed, it's an indication you're going back to it. That's why every morning when I get up, I, I make my bed. I do something. I've tried to teach my kids that and others because an unmade up bed is an invitation to head back to it. When Sister Lori is, is out of town, I don't even worry about the bed. I sleep on the couch. I don't want to have to get all them pillows and throw them back up there on the bed. I don't know what's up with all that throwing the pillows. Why you got say seven, say, it's 18 pillows on the bed. Amen. And you look at it, you can't even hardly, it covers up half the bed. And then when you, before you go to bed, you got to throw them all off to bed to get into bed. And in the morning, you throw, uh, you know, and who goes back there but just you two? I don't know what's up with all that. Amen. I just stay, and I'm just saying for us men, because sometimes the men in here, they ain't not going to speak up. They're just going to shut up. They don't get in no trouble about it, you know. I hope I didn't get y'all in no trouble. But I tell you, when she's gone, I'm sleeping on the couch. Uh, it's just something like that. But a certain man named Ananias, just stay with him, man. Bed fast, eight years. Again, it's a time for a new beginning. It's time for a new season in his life. The Bible says he was sick of the palsy. When you look at the word palsy, amen, it's an, an atrophy, wasting of the muscle, a, a condition characterized by the loss of control of movement of muscles through disease or destruction of nerves, like muscular dystrophy. It can be like cerebral palsy. Again, you know about my family being attacked with, with, with these type of things. I know of others. I've talked uh, uh, quite a bit to Robert about Cameron's life, you know, and, and seeing this. But I'm telling you, when this man was laying there, and, he, and, and he, can't, he can't really do anything. And there's several times in the Word of God, when they lower the man down in the ceiling, the Bible says he had a palsy. Amen. In other words, he's unable to speak. Peter sought him out, but the guy was sick of the palsy. Listen to me. you got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. you got to get frustrated about the way things are. Whatever you choose to tolerate will never change. Say it with me. What I choose to tolerate will never change. Now, there are things worth tolerating. I'm one of them. You follow me, amen? There are people, the one next to you is probably one of them. There are things, but sometimes it's our, 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 our health condition. Sometimes it's our financial condition. Sometimes it's our spiritual condition, as David was speaking about. You got that, for that to change, I got to get frustrated and say, look, I got to quit tolerating that. I got to deal with it, amen? If there's no meat in the refrigerator, you better quit tolerating that and get your gun. All right. Amen. The Bible says in verse 33, he found him. Peter sought him out. Jesus Christ. He said, Jesus Christ makes you whole. Here's a man who walked with authority. Uh, last week I talked to you about Jesus standing on the bow of the boat and said, peace be still to the storm. He knew what Jesus could do. He, and he also heard Jesus say this, all power in heaven and earth is given to me and I've given it to you. Greater things, Jesus said, you're going to do. Because I'm leaving. Not greater as in miracles that you've seen, but greater in, qu in quantity. In other words, you're going to see them spread out everywhere. So Peter's just doing, you ever just had this blind faith? Kids have got it. Kids have got it. Just a blind faith to go do something, to pray over people. Sometimes we try to figure it out too much. We try to say to ourselves, okay, let's, let's figure out how, how this is going to happen. I, I like the kids' faith. You know, when, when the flood hit, Colton, I was talking to him on the phone, my eight-year-old grandson. He said, Papa, just dig the river out. Yeah, he, I mean, he's already got, I, I like people who have solutions but have no idea how to make it happen. <laughs> Never mind about that one. I had, I'll deal with him later. But Jesus makes you, makes you whole. In other words, he makes you praiseworthy again.
Not only do I give praise, but praiseworthy means there's something about me that's uh, appreciative to other people. I, you're not just going to lay there and get uh, alms. You're not just going to lay there and get, get beggar's money. But now I'm telling you, you are praiseworthy. The, the Scripture tells us of our spouses, they're praiseworthy. To be able to praise one. The, the Scripture says of, of, of a, a good woman, the children shall rise and call her blessed. She's praiseworthy. So now this man has gone from a place of, of just laying around around but now he's worthy he's he's everybody say I'm worthy you don't feel worthy I don't even talk about Saturday night many times that's our problem we don't realize that it was Christ that made us worthy it wasn't our works it's what he did he wrapped himself around filthy rags Amen. It made us whiter than snow. It's, it's amazing when I think about we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's not some crazy preaching. That's the truth, man. Amen. Truth, truth is a powerful thing. You know, I'm going to tell you, nothing tells the truth like a toddler, a drunk, or a pair of spandex. That's truth right there. Can I get an amen? Mm-hmm. I know some of you are. Some of you are going to get that later. Amen. Some of you been wanting to say that. You ain't said nothing. You've been quiet. Never mind. Okay. So, so he, just as Jesus came to seek and save the lost, Peter is doing the same thing. He's emulating his master. Whatever the master did, that's what I'm going to do. And if you'll follow Peter's life, he emulated things that Jesus did. In Acts 9 verse 40. The scripture says there was a woman who, named Tabitha who was sick. She was dying. Amen. Matter of fact, she had died. Peter sent them. The Bible says when he got there, the people were mourning. He removed the people from the room. Where did he learn that? In the book of Mark tells us that when Jesus went to Jairus' house, the mourners were there. He kicked the mourners out. Sometimes you've got to get doubt out. Get doubt out of here. Get doubt out of here. Sometimes you've got to say, y'all need to leave this room. Mama going to pray. I can't pray with y'all yakking up in here about sometime. If I hear one more word about a fortnight, I'm going to hit somebody. Get out of here. And get in there and start praying. So that's what Peter did. When Jesus did it for Jairus, and, the, and the, who was a pastor, I understand, a leader of the synagogue, he goes in there and prays over a little girl. Sunshine, I call her, 12 years old, raised her from the dead. You remember this? And he says to the little girl after she rose up from the dead, don't tell nobody. If you want somebody to tell something, tell them don't tell it. Just don't, 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 don't tell nobody. Well, hold on. You don't want me to tell nobody that you raised me from the dead. Everybody outside the building, this is Mark chapter 5, everybody outside the building knows that I'm dead. That's why they're out there mourning. And you want me to come up from the dead and sneak me out the back door. <laughs> Read the story. Jesus said don't tell nobody. They out there, ooh, ooh, ooh. You know why they were doing that? They got paid for it. <laughs> they were professional mourners. They only got paid they, when they're, they're mourning. They, they literally got paid. And if you've heard them in the Middle East, it's, it's kind of like, wah, 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 wah. I can't even do it. Wah, 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 wah. They get really crazy. <laughs> I'm not trying to make fun. I'm just telling you. It's funny. So, so they out there screaming and hollering for Jairus trying to make the preacher feel better and encourage him because his daughter's dead. Matter of fact, Jairus' own wife said, why did you bring the preacher? Why did you bring Jesus? She's dead. Peter's observing this. If you remember when Jesus went to pray for them, he only took three disciples, Pete and JJ. Pete, James, and John, his favorite three. Jesus' favorite click. Work on it. And he brings these three with him, and they're observing, watching. One of my great blessings in life is when somebody emulates something that I do well. It's easy to emulate bad, isn't it? It's so easy to pick up on people's doing bad. Now, you know, kids, don't, they're not born cussing. But when they hear it, I, they hear all good stuff all the time. I won't say nothing about it. But all of a sudden, I hear you say something. <laughs> and you get a little call from, 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 from school. And the teacher said, your son just called me the B word. 
And then you go in and talk to your wife. Honey, what you been talking about around here? <laughs> you know what's happening? He picked up on something. Now watch. Also, good things to be picked up on. So Peter, James, and John are watching Jesus. He kicks the doubt out, gets him out of the room, goes over, grabs a little girl by the hand, and says, Talafakumai, which interpreted sunshine, arise, and shine, lifts her up from the, the bed and looks at her and says, to the parents and her, don't tell anyone. <laughs> and he walks out of the way. And they're outside the door going, ah! Ah! She did it! Everybody's born. And all of a sudden, she walks outside. Let me say that again. They only got paid when somebody stayed dead. You follow me? If you, this, I've told people this forever. It, it, when, when you see this in life, you'll realize that 40 years ago, God saved me. H, I, I, I dropped my first slit small liquor. I was six. I, I, I drank up until the time I, I got I was drunk the night before I got saved. Forty years, I've not had a shot of whiskey, beer, wine. Do you know how much money that my born-again experience cost Budweiser? <laughs> oh, come on now. You give God a praise up in here. Get your praise up. And again, I'm not condemning you over drinking. I, I, can't, I can't beat you up over drinking because I see it in Scripture. But I don't, I'm telling you, you're not, you shouldn't be getting drunk. Because nothing tells the truth like a toddler, a drunk, or a pair of spandex. All right now, okay? You better write that down, Cheryl. No, no, Cheryl writes all my stuff. I'm not picking on her about spandex. If I was, I'd get on to Valerie about it, but not, not, not her. So Peter goes in the room. Give him a scripture back up, Mike. So here's Peter. Jesus already resurrected from the dead. Peter just act like Jesus everywhere he goes. He, he tells a man in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ heals you. Man gets up. Peter not shocked. He's seen it his whole life. Then we get over here in Acts chapter 9. Peter sent them all out. They're all in there whining and crying. He said, y'all need to get out the room. Get out the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed, turning toward the dead woman. He got down on his knees. He turned away from the problem. He turned away from the tragedy. He turned away from the difficulty. He didn't stare at it. He turned away. Sometimes we look at something that looks impossible too long. Turn away from it. Look toward him. He prayed, Jesus, I need you to raise Tabitha up from the dead. All the folk out there, it's all up to you now. Then he gets up and turns to her. Follow that? It's in the scripture there. He got down on his knees, prayed, turning toward the dead woman. He said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes. And seeing Peter, she sat up. What a story. Emulate. Emulate. I very seldom will watch a preacher on TV. I'm afraid if I do, I'll start talking like him. And acting like him. And I want to be me. Now, I'll, I'll listen to him. <laughs> I'll listen to him. But if I watch him, I remember. Do you remember Benny Hinn? Oh, my God. He, he blow on people. I was in a revival once and I'd preach it and the men I had them lined up in the front and they were all going to get the people going to get prayed over and, and, and I, listen, this, is, this really happened and then I had a man jump in front of me and said I got him and he'd been watching Benny Hinn and he started going blowing on people Kenny, and then to get him out of head and shove him way back he man tried to knock him down and he blew his gum out and almost hit me with it <laughs> When we started the church way back in the day, I laid hands on a woman. She went and hit the floor and broke her ankle, quit church. Yeah, that's right. Somebody said, well, pastor, you should have had catchers. I thought, well, if God knocked her down, God could catch her. I haven't really nothing. And I, I'm just telling you, this is the church world we live in, okay? And sometimes it happens. Sometimes folk go down. I'm, I'm not against all that. I'm, I'm cool with it, but that's why I've got carpet. Um, where was I, H? <laughs> he, ra he raised, oh my goodness, and this is online. <laughs> but, uh, I've, 
If you've ever heard Billy Graham preach, Billy Graham was a manuscript preacher. All his sermons were written word for word. You watch him with his glasses on, observe him. They're down like this. He's looking down. He's reading word for word. Then along come a man who was influenced by him. His name was John Hagee. John Hagee is a manuscript preacher. Word for word for word, right down the line. And then you, you start it and you think, okay, God, what, what am I going to be? You know, seriously. Uh, three points in a poem. Help me. I don't know which way to go. So you have to come up with your own way. When I watched Jesus, he was a storyteller. He was a master storyteller. He would tell parables and hide secrets in them. I love to watch what Jesus did. And one of the things I want is when we get to heaven to hear some of the, the messages that he shared about where he was. That's why my mind always goes back to them. Uh, uh, Elisha was like Elijah. Amen. When the coat fell on uh, Elisha, when Elijah went up in the whirlwind, he grabbed the coat, slapped the water, the waters parted. He emulated the man he had been serving. There was nothing wrong with that. Amen. But here's the reasons for taking the bed, and I got to go here. First, there's positive reasons for taking to the bed. In need of rest, Psalm 41.3, to all you Baptists, the Lord will sustain him on his sick bed and restore him from his bed of illness. What I mean by that is I often talk to people. I say, where are you going? They say, I'm a bedside Baptist. I say, what's that mean? I'm staying home on Sunday in the bed watching it on TV. Bedside. The springs of life. That's where I'm going. Listen, it's amazing when you take to the bed and you're a little bit sick, God raises you up. Amen. There's a time for the rest. The negative is, is when you're despondent and hurt. There are people in this room right now who are absolutely heartbroken over things that have happened over the last few weeks in their life. Despondent. Psalm 6 says this. And what I'm telling you is you can't go back to the bed. You've got to press on. I'm weary with my groaning all the night. David speaking. Make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. Mine eye is consumed because of grief. It waxes old because of all my enemies. And number two, when trying to get out of responsibility. In other words, when you, you, you... Listen, let me go back to this other one. There are times when you are down, and I've talked to you about the circles of life, that you're at the bottom of your circle... The depression is on. Yes, the bed is good for a little while, but you got to get up. You can't stay there. Eight years he laid there. Eight years. His name meant praiseworthy and praise. It was time to get his praise up. Amen. To get up. And he got up. And the Bible says the whole town turned toward Christ when they saw this miracle. Listen, be careful of going back to bed. It's, it's getting out of responsibility. As a door turns on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. A sluggard, it comes from the word slug. You saw a frog in your shower. I know you from California because you let it live. If you was from Louisiana, you'd have had them legs in the frying pan tonight. As the door hinges, a slug is a snail. It moves across. We, we finally got carpet in the house. I remember as a young man, my dad would build. He had a garage, build a garage, build a garage. So our house stair stepped just like this. Every time he built a new garage, you know, it just kind of stepped. But we got, finally got carpet in. It was on a birthday. I remember I was February the 8th. Uh, I was probably 9 or 10 years old. And me and my brother would get up in the morning. And we would see this silver trail running across the carpet. What in the world? A silver trail across this green carpet. And so, so the next morning we'd see it again. So we decided to stay up and look at it, see what's going on. And I, there it was, that slug, that snail coming across the carpet, moving on. It has purpose. I don't know what it is. Again, I guess the folk from Louisiana do, but I don't know what it is. But here it is, moving across the floor. And, and my mom said, get some salt. We grab some salt and you put some salt on that. You ought to try this. On. I mean, this is, this, we didn't play video games. So we had some salt. We put some salt on that. And all of a sudden, he just squeeze up in a little ball and die. You know, he just suck all the juice out of it and throw it away. That's how you deal with snail. A sluggard moves slow. The Bible says they hinge to the bed. Hinges. You know what I'm talking about. 
You're laying in the bed, alarm clock goes off, and you hinge. Nine minutes later. Nine minutes later. Two times is tolerable. The third time you're in sin. Beds are not designed for us to stay there. Beds are built to get out of. Psalm 42. Ramirez, I got to start closing here. Psalm 42, verse 11. When my soul... Why, 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 why? Why, why, my soul, are you downcast? I'm so glad for the Word of God. It teaches us that men and women went through hard times in life. And they wrote it down. And, 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 they, and they proclaimed it. And they let folk know about it. David said, why, 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 why? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. The scripture talks about sheep getting cast, a cast down sheep, a sheep that goes down. This is what David's talking about. The term is actually to backslide. Well, why did why did one backslide? Why do why do we go back to the bed? Why do we backslide? First, uh, roll on. Uh, first, we hunt for a soft spot, a well worn out spot. Now, look, I know where you're at today because you always sit there. I'm not down on you. I'm cool with it. It helps me find you. But it's our nature, our human nature, to hunt for a soft spot. And sheep will get in a soft spot. They'll get in a hole in the ground. And they have this terrible equilibrium problem. All of us do. You think you, oh, I got it going on, Pastor. No, no, no. I'm talking about spiritually equilibrium. Things knock you off real quick. So the sheep will get into the, into the hole. And all of a sudden, they, they, they'll flip over and their feet are in the air. And their butts are in a hole. And they're stuck. And if the shepherd is leading the people, the sheep, then he has to turn around and come back to find him. If he doesn't, the wolf does. That's why you read that there are wolves in sheep's clothing. They have taken the sheep. Second thing that happens, we got too much wool. How do you get cast? Why are you down? I'm going to help you. And this is going to hurt you. You got too much stuff. You got too much stuff. Wool represents the clinging accumulation of things, possessions, worldly ideas, beginnings to weigh us down. They drag us, they hold us down. Some of us are ideas. We got ideas about God. We, we, we hear higher intellectuals talk about the, the earth can't be this old, it has to be this old, and all this has to be evolution, all, all these things, and we, and we got this accumulation, this wool. In life, many times we get too much stuff. We get storage buildings. We start going down and down. We got too many things to take care of. And it begins to pull us down. In other words, we lose our passion toward God, the things of life, living by faith, because things are pulling us down. I've told you for years, if God can get it through you, he'll get it to you. In life, man, a lot of that stuff God's blessing you with, you got to move it on to others that God may bless them. Third, an idea of arrival. I've arrived. This gets you in trouble. It's a warning. Revelation 117. You say, I'm rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. You think you got it? No, you're poor, blind, and naked. That's what you are. You think you arrived. You haven't arrived. You haven't got there yet. A doctor will try to get you out of bed. Get you exercising. Get you in therapy. Get you moving. Because you stove up, man. It's like everything starts equilibrium and loss of balance. I, I had surgery on my ankle. They fused my ankle. And they put me, literally put me in bed for a couple of months. I don't know why. This is the way they did it. I had a cast up to my, to my hip. And uh, they had a window on the side of my, and they would, they would nurse the wound and, and the, the blood. And I'm, I'm, I'm 16 years old, you know, and I want to go. I want to do stuff. And I remember I, I jumped up out of bed one time. I'm t I said, I'm tired of this. I jumped up out of bed, and I stood up, and it was like the head rush. I hit the floor. Boom. Man, I just passed out. Jumped up too quick. You can't stay in bed too long. Amen. You got, you got to get up. It, you know, that inactivity will hurt you. So, Pastor, how do you know that you're still in bed? First, you want to be pitied and patted. You just want to be pitied. You thought life only happens to you? It happens to everyone. Yeah, you're going through a difficult time. But when you pastor long enough as I have, I look around and I see, I, I see so many people. I get to know your story. Just get to hear your story. Everybody got a story. Everybody got a song. People go through things. 
And you've got to take what you've gone through and get through it so you can help somebody else go through it. Do you know why these men help folk who've gone through floods? Because they've gone through it. Amen. They help people where they've been helped. Uh, you, you can't praise no more. That's how you know you've taken to the bed. You're not thankful. You're grumpy. You're laying on a cuck of burr and you like it. You can't put the past in the past, the hurts and disappointments. Matthew 18, Jesus said, Woe unto the world because of offenses. It, it, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to the man of whom they come. An offense is an event. Offended is a reaction. Everybody who's human gets offended. I, I, I tell you, I've never offended my dog. Never offended my dog. Never have. I, I can lock him up. Take a couple days out feeding him. He good with me. I've told you. I can lock him in the trunk of my car. Head down the road. Open it up. He'll jump out lick me. Love me. Do that to my wife. <laughs> Humans get offended. We have opportunity for offense. All of us. You're always going to get to have it. But listen. Offended is a reaction. So if you offend me, or if I get an offense, I have to decide whether or not I want this to bother me. So if you're offended, it's your fault. Yeah. You allowed it to happen. And some people know where your buttons are. And they touch them and push them, and they're watching. And if you don't react to it, <laughs> you'll, they'll go crazy. Because they don't know how to handle you anymore. Because you're not mad like that anymore. Amen. Proverbs 17, 9. Whoever conceals an offense promotes love. Conceals it, promotes love. Covers it, promotes love. But whoever gossips about it separates friends. You can tell me. Proverbs 17, 9. Whoever forgives an offense seeks love. But whoever keeps bringing up the issue separates the closest of friends. You know, we were really close friends until I started talking about it. You want to stay close? Shut up. Proverbs 19.11. Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is to his glory to overlook an offense. I know you love me, Kenny. I know you didn't mean nothing by that. I'm just going to overlook that. Not it. Stand with me. Jesus Christ heals you. The man jumped up, leaping, praising, excited, grabbed up his bed, made up his bed so he wouldn't go back into it, goes out. Matter of fact, Peter in one place, you remember this story, he had to make his bed up before he left prison. He understands the principle. Get to bed, take care of it. Runs out, and the scripture says, All those who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. This town will turn to God when you get your praise up. When they know you've been down and you turn to Jesus, something shifts in their life. There's no greater miracle than a born again believer. When somebody says, You know what? I'm just going to turn from my life, turn my life back over to Him, believe Him for the best. I don't understand. Listen, you think I understood this book when I got saved? I didn't understand anything in this book. I didn't know who David and Goliath was. I didn't know who, that Moses had built an ark and that Noah had took the people across the Red Sea. I didn't know this book. But I trusted him. I said, all right. What have I got to lose? Early death? Foolishness? Hell? What have I got to lose? And I gave my life to him. Oh, I remember the day. I drove a 72 Dodge Charger. Eight track. Realistic from Radio Shack. Under dash. Didn't want to mess up the original. Under the dash. I was playing Nazareth, hair of the dog. Now you messing with her. I was smoking a Viceroy. I remember, man. Like it was yesterday. And again, I ain't down on you smoking. You know, whatever. You Look, it's your call. You want to get to heaven quicker? Get on with it. 
But I'm, I'm, I'm puffing on a viceroy. And I'm thinking that I just went to an altar in Cherry Hill, in Florence, Alabama, during a, a Christian rock concert. Because I wouldn't go hear no preaching. I didn't want to hear no preaching. And gave my life to Jesus. I don't even remember what I said. I just know I was sorry for how I'd been living and all the people I've been hurting. I done hurt my mom, disappointed my dad. My brother was emulating me. He's one year younger than me. He was emulating me and my actions. My sister, who was disabled, loved me with all her heart. Couldn't understand why her big brother was acting this way. I'm actually her little brother, but she looked at me as her big brother. So I, I went down and gave my life to Jesus. I get in the car, and I'm all by myself, and that's when the fight takes place, right here. And that fight went down. I felt that devil tugging, saying, listen, all your friends go to church. All your beer-drinking, women-chasing, foul-mouthed friends go to church. Something different took place in me. Now, I'm not condemning those guys. But something took place in me. And I took them Viceroy's, because there's the only things left in the cigarette machine at the Sonic restaurant where I work. I threw them out the window. I pulled that eight track of Nazareth out and I chunked it out the window. I said, all right, let's give it a shot. That happened on a Saturday night. Went to church on Sunday with Bubba and Randy. Sat in church with them. I didn't know what this meant. I, the only time my hands were up is when I heard stick them up and now I'm in church and I'm seeing hands up got my skull ring in my back pocket I'm watching hands go up and I have this freedom come over me the next week this is what happened my friends who I ran with showed up at my house with a case of beer and had a date for me that night and I said guys I'm going to church and they said we went this morning I said yeah I know y'all did but I had to work this morning. I'm going to church tonight. And I walked away from them. My brother said the hardest thing I ever did in my life, walk away from my friends. I didn't walk away from them. I just started serving God and they didn't want to be around me. Yeah, true. Philippians 3.13. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining, pressing, Toward what is ahead, I press on. I press on. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. Spirit of God, do what only you can do. Do what only you can do. We're asking you to touch hearts this morning. Turn people toward you. We cast no stones better than thou. We ask you to do what you can do. I'll do my part. I know you'll do yours. If you've been away from God, would you put your hand up? If you don't know Jesus, would you put your hand up? You've never accepted him. Just put your hand in the air. There's several hands in the air right now. Just hold your hands up. Anyone else before we pray? Just put your hand up. I need you, Jesus. Pray this with me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me my sins. Come into my heart and change me. Make me more like you. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm going to serve you the best I can the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God a crazy praise in here. Would you do that? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. A little pressed, guys. Sorry about this. Sit down just for a second. Look, Cheryl, do we have Bibles in the back? Do we have Bibles back there? Okay. If we have Bibles, if you, if you need a Bible, get you, stop by the, the bookstore back there and get a Bible. And you say, Pastor, okay, I'll get it and start reading in Genesis. Don't start reading in Genesis. There's 66 books in that book, in that Bible. Start in the book of John. Read John. Okay, because Matthew, Mark, and Luke are all three pretty much the same. John wrote 60 years after Jesus' uh, resurrection, okay? So it's a little bit of difference there. 
When you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they're going to tell you Jesus was born. When you get to John, John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Amen. He puts Jesus in the very beginning. It makes a big difference as you're reading. And then once you get done with John, go to Psalms, Proverbs, then come talk to me. We'll get you on something. Then the epistles. Start working through the epistles. Romans and, and uh, Corinthians and, uh, you know, places like that. The servant leaders, come up, Ronnie, please, you guys. Coach. Mm-hmm. You talk about a ride, 40 years. Sam, that's a long time. A lot longer than I thought I'd be alive. It's been a long ride. So seed has been sown today. We're going to ask God to water it throughout the week. Don't be surprised if there's a divine appointment in your life this week. That you, somebody starts talking to you right out of the blue about Jesus. You go, oh, hold on now. Hold on now. I, I went to church on Sunday. I done heard it again. Here I go again. Watch what God does. If you need to tie the offered envelope, and you do, unless you're a guest, amen, lift your hand. If you're with us now and it's your second time, you're no longer a guest. Support this house. After church today, after the second service, if you'd like, if you'd like, come out and eat with us on the grounds. If you'd like, I'll give you an order. Fried chicken. You pick up some fried chicken and bring it out there. I'll help eat it. Because I ain't going to have time to go get anything. And you got time now. Because I got to go preach out there. So you get lots of fried chicken. I like Popeyes. Okay. And uh, bring it out to the camp. And after service, we'll have uh, dinner on the grounds. And then we're going to take the chairs that we got. uh, The new chairs. You know how hard it was to watch? I watched 800 chairs be thrown away this week 800 400 from the first flood that we still had stored and the last 400 from the last one and had to watch them get thrown away soaked wet and moldy so now i got new chairs we're going to put them in the sanctuary in other words we're going to take up our chair and walk feel like the scripture said here take up your bed and walk well we're going to take up our chairs and walk and after we eat today we're going to take them over it'd be a great day for a bike ride ride your scooter out Come on out. Hang out with us. Love to have you. Everybody got an offering envelope? Needs one? David, if you come make the rest of these announcements. I know you've read and studied the paperwork. I got it. Listen, first of all, I will say, it just happened to fall next to my name. It was not there on purpose, okay? That was accidental, but... So I'll take it. I'll take it. Today, November 10th, remember, we it's Veterans Day on Monday. Just uh, pick up your toy soldier on the way out if you served in the military, if you had family in the military, just to commemorate and memory, uh, just to have memory of our, our beloved family that was in the military. November 17th, Tayden's Pantry Thanksgiving food. Please sign up for the Thanksgiving blessed dinner box to be handed out on the 17th at the new Kenny campus. See Rhea Jones for questions. November 10th, Swap Seniors Bible Study. That's today after service in the Fellowship Hall. See Ken and Linda Rich. November 10th, dinner on the grounds. Again, right after the next service. Come out and hang out with us. November 16th, TLCC Ladies Spark Connect Group Potluck. Um, 9 a.m. Ladies Connect uh, Potluck in North uh, in the New Caney Chapel. Uh, bring potluck dish and a baby item, seat flyer, or Miss Marie for details. November 17th is the Speed Connection, um, and they're going to be going to see Ford vs. Ferrari. Looks like a really, really good uh, movie. Uh, again, what was that? Why are we laughing? It, it does look like a good movie. Looks like a good movie. <laughs> Apparently, she doesn't think it looks like a good movie. It's, you don't have to go. You can go home. Uh, Listen, uh, just uh, remember to say thanks to the men and, and, and the women that will be here uh, just to come out and serve us, to have friends that are willing to come and serve and to be with us. It's an incredible, incredible thing. Today we're believing God for. Oh, one more thing. Uh, Miss Rhea told me to tell you that today is the end of the fundraising for the art, so sh- she needs to see all the parents of the kids that are going to Kentucky with her. Okay, That's in her classroom right after service. Today we're believing God for jobs and better jobs.
More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts to malls, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom.